Man of Lords Warfare. So a lot of people are focused on the city building aspects of this game. I thought I'd have a video dedicated to battles, war, the soldiers, and the actual military in this game. And why not do it as a dedicated, unedited video to show you an actual full battle in Man of Lords in real time, to give you an idea of the duration, to give you the idea of the power of your troops and how you do your tactics in this said battle. So first of all, let's go to the troops. So first of all, we have a retinue here. So retinues are given to you by your mana. If you look at my mana at home, I've made several garrison towers. And for every garrison tower I build, it increases my retinue side by 12. It does say it's restricted based on how many regions I own. However, I only own three regions. So it somehow let me go over the retinue cap. Be aware, this is early access, and this is an early release version, so a lot of this might be patched. But it is really impressive to see a warband like this. A brigade, I would call it, with so many troops in it. 132 men. And if you look really closely, some of these retinue have plate armor. And I'm going to presume this is going to increase their defense significantly. It gives them a lot more armor. You can see this guy here. Can you see him with his helmet here? And he's got a full plate helmet as well as plate on his chest as well well some of them are a little bit more naked looking let's give an example like this guy here can you see him here with his axe and small uh, buckle shield as well as the um, the robes he's wearing but as you can see there's a lot of flavor because every character here looks a little bit different if you look at their faces you can see their facial hair is a little bit different as well so there's loads of flavor of each individual character models right so retinues how do they work? So if you hold tab, you can actually see a breakdown of their stats. So you can see they attack with four. They've got anti-armor of one. So they can't break armor very well. However, they have lots of armor of 32. My understanding is, let's look at the troops that we can hire. So we have militia footmen. We have spear militia. I think spears are your basic troops. I believe they've got the best defense against arrows and then we have pole arms and they're your anti-armor so they're going to be right rock paper scissors your uh, retinues and then archers of course they arrange i don't really show how militia footmen fit into this though i'm not made one of those yet the reason why i've got an army here that is archer base see these ones here these are all archer militia and the reason why my army consists of that is the minute is because that's why I had a lot of bows to use and I could make those militias instantly. Where if you look really closely, these ones, I'll just actually show you, but for instance, the uh, militia footmen need a large shield and an axe. But the spear needs a spear and a shield and the halberd just needs, what well, a halberd. And, uh... And with that, you need two pieces of equipment to actually uh, form that militia. Whereas, for instance, the, I guess the polman only requires one kind, but it requires a lot of steel to make a pole arm. So it's kind of easy to make archers as such. And as well, all these red ones here, these are all mercenaries that we've hired. Once again, as it currently stands at the moment, that's the mercenary button, by the way. Uh, mercenaries seem to come thick and fast sometimes you have so many options and then sometimes you have no options and sometimes you have a whole game where you'll never have any mercenaries at all i, I don't know how it's calculated i don't know how the back end is be aware this is early access it's more for demonstration purposes when the game's officially out they probably have more sense to how militias appear and then disappear all right then so this is the final region we're in this one and we're going to claim this region off the AI, and this will result in bringing his army and contesting this claim in this region. What we're going to do is I've already set them up, but I'll show you. So we selected all of the archers. So I'm holding shift click on each of these, and I'll put them in control group one, which is shift one, and the same for all my infantry. And uh, they are all going to be on two. So if I go one, I've got these guys, and then two, I've got the infantry. I think what I want to do is have the longest possible line of archers and just behind it, the uh, footmen. You can, see, can you see the size of the retinue? It's so massive in comparison to all the others. I realize I've forgotten one archer. Whoops. Resign up there. See, the contesting is here and they're going to actually have a battle. And more than likely, yep, there we go. This is the full battle, and these are the full numbers they're bringing forward. I think I'll have slightly more numbers because I've kind of gamed the system here by hiring so many mercenaries. Once again, we're going to watch this battle happen in real time, and I'm going to try and use a hit-and-run tactic on a friendly fire-style tactic to try and pelt them with as many arrows as I can 
just uh, imagine this is like an English army defeating, I don't know, the French, I guess, but they've not got any knights. So I guess, is it really French? I don't know. I don't know. The, the English versus another infantry-based nation. Please name that in the, the comments below. All right, so I'm going to control group one this again. And once again, really long front line here. We also have the option here to shoot at will. And it simply means that I don't have to select them a target who they're going to shoot at. That whenever someone comes into range, which you can see here, if you cover over them, you can actually see the range of the archer. So in that case, whenever they, they come in within range, they will take a shot at them. So what I'm just doing here is I'm waiting for them to come forward. They're basically saying you could drop your claims if you want, and they'll spend me some money to drop the claims, but we're not going to do that. Also, right now, these retinue are weird. So I think what I'm going to do is make a really long line of retinue across the center. Maybe I want the retinue on control group three. Yeah. So we'll select these guys. They're going to be on two. And then you'll be on three. Yeah, there we go. Switch one, two, three, one, two, three. You get the idea, right? And we've got the full army. So once again, we can have a breakdown if you want. So if I hold shift on here, you can actually see the range is 58 meters. The range attack is two, but you can see their attack ability and armor ability uh, is pretty low, only one armor. So they do have melee capabilities, uh, but unfortunately it doesn't ha it's not very high. Be aware too that looks like you have a morale penalty for being soaking wet. It looks like everyone's getting that. So what difference would that make? I I'm not quite sure. So it makes me think, well, maybe there's a troop that doesn't experience soaking wet. I'm not sure. It's interesting to see experience. So what I've been using these archers for is fighting bandits. And you can see this one here has got 25 experience. And you can also see, oh, look underneath it. There's, oh, okay. Let me just break this down. So we've got morale and the impact of morale. Of course, morale is high because of experience. And morale has been hurt because it's wet. But also look at raining. 39% penalty for reigning this for effectiveness. I think effectiveness is their ability to project their stats and their power. Where you see the coercion's high because they're in a good formation. But if I told them to run really quickly, they break coercion, so they won't be as effective actually in combat. Okay, this guy is a little bit far back. Let me just adjust him a little bit. The reason his icon is here, but the troops are actually here. If you press R, you can toggle run as well. So once again, I'm waiting for these guys to come further forward. They're slowly marching forward. As you can see, they're more infantry based, but we also have a uh, an outlaw band, which don't follow a formation, but can be good at flanking. And you tend to find the AI tends to flank them too. They also have a 36 retinue here. Swordsmen, swordsmen, spears, swords, and then there's probably three archers. Right, a battle has officially begun, and this is the battleground. So I think what I'm gonna do is just steer my troops in the direction they're going to be facing. It's probably going to be more worthwhile if I try and aim for the high ground, but an open plane gives me an advantage when it comes down to using my archer, so I'm going to take advantage of that. And we'll also move the infantry directly behind as well. The plan is this, to use our archer advantage to pelt them with arrows, but then pull them back behind the infantry when need be. And then when they're behind and engage, I can fire over the top and hit them. They will have a high chance of hitting my troops as well, but I don't really care at the moment because we have a massive archer advantage and we are okay to lose some of our troops on the front. And also this retinue. Make a one big line. Oh my god, one huge line of retinue. Remember, retinue are heavy infantry. They've got ability to hold the line really well. So what we can do is give them an order to stand ground. And as you can see, it says it doubles their defense, but their attack frequency is halved. So what we're going to do then is the attack power will be the amount of arrows we can fire. Okay, so first of all, the spears are pulling forward. It looks to me like the spears of the spearmen have a big shields. So that's why I said earlier that I think they're meant to counter infantry. Sorry, they're meant to counter archers. So here we go. First volleys are going off right now. They're hitting the troops. You can see the effectiveness is dropping, and they are taking a hit to their fatigue. But the, you can see the actual top bar, the one with the flag, that's their morale. And right now, it's still really pretty tip-top. Are they taking any extra damage at the moment? No. What we're going to do initially is when they come close and they charge, I'm going to double-click and press R to run. And I do that immediately. Right now, the, the archers on the flanks are going to do damage. But they're engaging sometimes. Nope, nope. We are going to pull back as far as we can, engage from the back. 
But right now, they're actually getting hit with damage. Now, you can see they're taking casualties. The full band was 36 troops, and now we're at 26. What we're going to do now is tell these guys to hold, but also there's other tactics we can choose as well. So, for instance, you can push, you can give ground, so you can lure them forward if you want to. You could basically shield your head in the event of uh, archers coming forward. I'm going to pull these guys back now as quickly as possible. And I really want them to engage my spearmen. Once again, I don't think I've taken any losses yet. No, I've not. And once again, the retinue are just damaged sponges. They seem to be behaving a little bit strange. I think they're not prepared for having a warband that's this big. I'm just going to engage them now. But remember, there's two lines of defense here that can break through. But right now, oh, we've lost an arch. That's our first casualty. F in the chat, boys. And as you can see right now, they're breaking the initial flanks. They're pulling me back. But then the net result of that is uh, we get into a better position for archers. They can fire back at them. So they've tried to put flankers on the left here. I'm pulled forward with my, my, uh, my troops. And maybe we can fire on them with the, uh, the archers that I've got. There isn't always a button at the very bottom of the screen for friendly fire, but there was a button. Oh, it's there now. You can actually see it. For some reason, it appears sometimes, but not always. Not all troops have the ability to friendly fire. It's almost like some of these brigades of archers have some kind of moral compass and they don't want to fire on their own troops, but some do. Maybe that's a bug. I'm not sure. Anyway, you guys break off. We're losing ground here. You see we're in the melee right now. Can you guys fire? What they tend to do is cheer because some of them don't want to do friendly fire once again i don't understand the reason for that maybe some of them have a moral compass i really just don't know and now let's look at the battle here and you can see we're engaging and pushing forward and remember this is our big fat retinue 132 of heavy infantry and you can see look experience 25 percent corpses nearby so the fear of death is getting into our troops inside of their head and their morale and they're taking a hit and also the army power balance i never even knew this was a thing is anyone affected by this? No. It looks like maybe a balancing system of like if you have an army that consists of just archers, I presume what's happening there is it's trying to maintain um, some kind of cohesion. Because if you had an army full of archers, it wouldn't be very cohesive. So therefore, it wouldn't have an impact on performance. Do you know what? I'm taking a guess here. Once again, we're working with what we've got right now. Remember, this game isn't out. So I'm just trying to make the most of what I've got. So I'm going to pull you guys back here. Um... Once again, keeping a close eye on everyone. They've not even broke into the second line here. Right now, they're just engaging with the initial line of retinue. And as you can see, we're completely destroying them here. Infantry versus infantry. And we're winning here. I think we had 36. We've only lost one where they've lost half of their troops. One thing I need to be aware of is I can see my ar their archers here are trying to flank me. And that's really a concern for me. So what I'm going to do is pull these guys off the back and tell them to engage. Friendly fire is going to be an option. Right again, they're engaging with my archers here. That really upsets me. So I'm going to try and push back. And pull away. There we go. Sometimes you have to tell them to move away several times because they don't usually always eat. And look, the archers are drilling into these archers at the back. I, once again, it looks like archers don't have much defense against archers. So archers are very effective against archers. And we just have the banner guy right now. Is, is, are they, is it over for them now? I don't actually know. There's this one guy running away. <laughs> I want to engage him. Let me run towards him. Okay, this guy's broke. The front's broke. We're going to move the retinue over. Are there any other troops? No. Wow. Okay, I thought this battle was going to be a little bit more epic, but by the looks of things, it's actually not. Uh, we're going to grab you guys. Oh, and straight up as well. The archers are going to engage the archers. And I just love to watch this. The archers fly over their heads and then uh, inflict damage. And you can see the effectiveness is low. Probably because the stamina is hurting because they're running so much. The AI seems to go around the back of you quite often with their archers to try and flank you, which is so awesome. I like that. But they seem to get behind you. don't really do that much. Once again, it'd be kind of cool if there was like an ability for archers to do more damage depending on what they're facing. Like for instance, if archers are firing at troops that are directly facing them with their shields, the amount of damage would be very, very limited. But then if they're being flanked from the side or the back, the amount of damage would be huge. I know this feels like I'm introducing tank tactics here in a kind of medieval battle, but think about it. If you prepared for the arrow coming, you can deflect it, move away from it and sit, make yourself smaller so you're less likely to be hit. So it looks like he's broken one of my troops here. You know, that was their final infantry and this is the very final one. So we're going to press two here. Um, no, for one actually, it's one. I want the archers and move all the archers forward and that's it. That, they're the only uh, brigade they've got left. And surprisingly, they've not broke. The morale is still good enough. These five troops. I don't want to lose the brigade. So I'm going to pull everyone forward. 
and then everyone else is gonna line up and fire here. Oh, how unbelievably cool is that? Oh my goodness, that is so awesome. And that's it. The brigade has been completely slain. All the troops are gone, and the battle has been won. As you can see, there's lots of flexibility with tactics. I think a lot of the time the tactics are all going to be based upon if the AI are affected by those said tactics. Like there's the ability to let, let the AI have ground and let them push you back. There's the ability to try and push them back in active combat to allow flanking and different maneuvers. How capable are they going to be of doing that? I'm not sure. But in this situation, as you can see, the combat in this game is rock solid. And it's really nice to see the stats of the troops and what's affecting them and what's going on around them. Because it lets you know more appropriately what tactics to apply in said battles. I love to see here, for instance, like corpses nearby affecting their morale. So obviously, the longer the battle goes on for, the more corpses are going to be appearing. And the more likely the battle will eventually turn into a different direction because morale is going to take a beating. But as you can see here, the morale is still 100% because minus 20 corpses nearby but plus 25 experience the effectiveness is still super high as well you tend to find that when you run into battle let's use the example of uh, the retinue the running right now because i double clicked they're running and then check this look at this so the fatigue buys the yellow one there can you see that and they're running and they're running i keep them running for a little while because you, you is it makes sense to you heavy infantry are heavy <laughs> they're carrying a lot of heavy equipment so when they run they lose all their stamina immediately it's when it's called fatigue it should be called stamina because it's a stamina bar is it but as you can see as he's moving right there we'll time to stop and uh as you can see they've lost half of their stamina now so their combat effectiveness is going to significantly drop and it'd be a kind of cool tactic that's like in emergencies to move people around or trying to have in the very end of a battle one brigade that's hidden in the woods that has high stamina that can pop out at any time and uh strike the final blow so if, if effectiveness is as effective as it makes out to be that's kind of really going to be a cool aspect of the battles there's an example i like this one to give ground so what it means is you're going to engage in melee um but they're going to pursue you, but they're going to play in a defensive manner where they kind of try and push back. So they actively let the enemy push you back. So you could push further back, push all the way to the woods, and then all of a sudden, archers are here to take some shots at them. That'd be so cool. And of course, you've got balance too. You've got stand your ground, as mentioned before. But there's also the opposite too of push them forward as well. So you could push them into a situation where, I don't know, let's say an example, you push them into this river. And of course, I would hope, I would hope, that has a massive impact on their morale. So for instance, if they were to run into water being wet, obviously would have a big effectiveness on their ability to fight. And because they're on lower ground too, that would also have a big impact on their ability to fight effectively. Is there a river nearby that we can use as reference? So maybe that, let's hope the stats are in the game. One other aspect too, which is really cool, is because this is polearm infantry. We'll speed the game up now. Because this is polearm infantry, if you look really closely, Oh, you can see climbing too, because they're going uphill, they're suffering for effectiveness penalty. It doesn't apply to specifically this retinue, but maybe it applies to one of the polearm retinues. Because it's such a massive two-handed weapon, swinging it in confined spaces is really difficult. And one of the stats I saw was uh, in woods. Oh, they go surrounded by trees. That actually reduces their morale. Oh, it has like a fear factor to it. Okay. It's, just, it's interesting to see some of the stat modifiers apply to morale and also the way they apply... Uh, to fatigue let's run towards this river now i'm going to go five speed now and see if going into this little stream river whatever you want to call it has an impact i'd imagine heavy infantry are probably super strong but are probably more fragile when it comes down to things like stamina and uh ground and whatnot it'd be kind of cool if climbing uphill or going downhill has more of an impact overall so they had a going downhill modifier which went up it was like being affected by water has not had any impact. But look at the effectiveness there. Fatigue minus 75%. So, of course, if you are playing against heavy infantry, you have lots of archers, you could let them pursue you. They'll lose all the stamina and they get annihilated by archery, which is kind of cool. The only piece of the pie that's currently missing from the game is kind of light cavalry. Because light cavalry in traditional in these kind of war mass numbers style games is the counter to archers but there really isn't a kind of counter to archers at the moment it is supposed to be this um shield infantry 
Oh, these are actually swordsmen. It's the, it's the spear one I'm trying to look for. This one. This is the one that's meant to be the counter. And I presume that because when you hover over it, it doesn't actually say range armor. It just says shield eight. And I'm presuming shield means resistance to projectiles. And it doesn't like spear infantry have the highest amount of shield number, which in this case is eight. Oh, then again, I take that back. Now I'm retracting that completely. Retinue have a shield of 43. I'm not quite sure, guys. Once again, we're playing it by ear here. We're reading the help guides that they provided us with, and we're working with what we've got. Once again, until the game is officially released, and we've had lots of builds and different build, we had lots of builds tried out. We don't really fully know uh, the best strategy overall. Well, I hope we gave you an inside view on in-depth combat and a real-time battle in Manor Lords, and uh, I can't wait for you guys to play the game, because I am having an absolute blast. Guys, I hope you have an absolutely awesome day, and I will see you guys next time. See you soon. Bye-bye.